The best way to predict the future is to create it. At the end of the day, it all comes down to what, what we think about is what we are. It's all about our thoughts and where we want to take our lives. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Unlock Meaning. And I'm so excited because today we're having Tom Federer on, who is highly successful. He co-founded the California-based Paragon Software Group Corporation. And over the past 15 years, the company has sold over 200 million software licenses to big shots like Dell, Cisco, HP, you name it, the big guys. And on top of that, he has taken one company through an IPO process and has contributed to six mergers and acquisitions that represent over $700 million. While being highly successful, Tom experienced some deep valleys in his life, and he's gonna tell us what he has taken from that, and he's gonna tell us how to live your best life. So stay tuned. Hey Tom. It's great to have you on the show today. Welcome to Unlock Meaning. All right. Hey, David, a pleasure. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's my pleasure too. Um, Tom, you experienced much success, a lot of success and also low valleys in your life. Do you mind drawing us into your story? Sure, sure. I, uh, my story, man, well, I'll tell you what, it started a, a long time ago. I've, uh, you know, was a, uh, an Air Force brat. My dad was a fighter pilot in the Air Force. So I was born in Zaragoza, Spain, and we traveled around a bit, but a long, long story short, I was one of four kids, had a, an idyllic childhood, grew up in a middle class in Colorado at the, uh, you know, where I went to the school and the high school and really had a great, great upbringing and a Lutheran, Lutheran background, Christian home. So uh, from there, you know, I, I'd probably want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the trials and uh, some of the valleys that hit me uh, early in my life. I was kind of directionless. My, my older brother was a great athlete. You know, I wanted to be a great athlete and I really didn't have a, uh, an outlet. And this is where God stepped into my life in a big way and uh, gave me basketball. And this is, uh, you know, sports it got me uh, to where I could be disciplined and uh, be consistent in doing something in my life which I really hadn't before, and, and that led to some, some great, great experiences. You know, I really wanted to go to the University of Denver there in Colorado, but it was like a, a dream too far. But, it, you know, I had it on my goal list. This is what I wanted, and long story short, uh, didn't make it. You know, when I was a senior in high school, they only recruited on the East Coast, and, you know, that was, uh, you know, just one of those things that, hey, you know, I, I got to do something else. I went to South Dakota, but again, this is a – God's hand really started in, in, a, in a big way in my life where, you know, I was up in South Dakota playing basketball for two years. And for the first time ever, they came down to play the University of Denver. And uh, I happened to have a great game. And long story short, there again, my, my parents went and talked to the coach. And I ended up getting a full ride scholarship to the University of Denver. And this is where, you know, it really started to, to strike me that, you know, these things were where I would envision and, and set goals that, you know, and pray about them that they could actually happen. And that was one of the major valleys that became a peak for me in my life. So that's that's kind of the, the start. And just a wonderful experience, University of Denver, uh, you know, God's grace, you know, got me there, captain of the team, 28 and four, best record in the history of the school, just a flying eye. And uh, from there went into the corporate world, you know, and that's where things uh, really started happening in, in uh, my life where uh, I had some real highs and some real lows, and that's what I'd like to get into because, um, you know, I could I could talk about my resume and all these great successes, but I want to be very authentic here and talk about the things that uh, really impacted my life, where where I had some incredible failures in my life. I'll get into it in a second, but I you know I failed as a father, I failed as a husband, I failed as a you know as a son, and uh, these valleys are what you know made me to what I am today, but. Uh, you know, it all happened for a purpose. And, you know, it all comes back to Romans 8, 8 28. Uh, you know, all things work together for good to those who love God and call according to his purpose. But, uh, you know, to get into that, you know, I had a great early success in my corporate life. 
I was at a company called Grid Systems that had the first laptop in the in the world, and I was out selling it for thousands of dollars, six thousand, seven thousand dollars for one laptop, and uh, ended up having a, a tremendous sales career at this company, and became the 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 golden child, you know, in my early uh, late twenties, and uh, all these accolades coming to me, and I started to believe I was bulletproof, uh, you know, where everything I touched was was turning to gold. And uh, I got married at that time uh, to a, just a wonderful lady. We ended up having uh, two children, and I continued to prosper in my my career, and ended up traveling a lot all over the world. In fact, and my priorities uh, became skewed. I became much more interested in in success and the dollars and the accolades than you know taking care of you know my responsibilities as a as a father and as a husband and. That ultimately, I was going after uh, with my team an uh, initial public offering where, you know, when that happens, everybody makes money on stock. It's a beautiful thing. But uh, my life came crashing down. The IPO never happened. We were 24 hours away from it happening and it exploded. At that point, you know, I had, you know, a million miles on my, my airline card and, you know, I didn't even know who my family was anymore. I had kids, uh, both two young boys, six and three and ended up uh, getting divorced. And this was a, you know, it was a tragedy where my, my sons, they ended up uh, 1,800 miles away in Iowa and I was in California. You know, it, it was, uh, you know, we wanted to get, get them close to my, uh, my former wife's parents and your grandparents, you know, and have a more of a stable life. So I ended up, you know, traveling back and forth on airplanes and, you know, it, it was a unbelievably depressing time. And I brought it all on myself. And this is where I think the Lord was just leading me into something different. And, you know, it just came to the point where it was clear I needed to change my life. I had been drinking way too much. You know, I wouldn't say an alcoholic, but it was like, it was too much. And, you know, everything in my life was up in the air. And this is where, uh, again, by God's grace, you know, four years after that divorce, uh, he gave me a, an angel. My, my wife of 20, 20, 22 years now, Carrie, came into my life and everything, everything changed. And, you know, it, it, I could see how God was, was bringing me to, to be something new, to transform me. And uh, we're fortunate to have two boys as well. So uh, I've got four boys and, uh, you know, I gave up drinking 20 years ago and I gave up traveling. Uh, you know, to where I, now my whole focus is, has come down to, you know, three priorities. Faith and family, health and wellness, and wealth building. So this is what I spend my time on after going through this, through this pain. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just so fortunate that I've got a great relationship with my older kids, even though I put them through such, such a, a tough, tough time. They're both incredibly young Christian men now just kicking butt in the business world. And, uh, you know, I've got one in high school and another in college that uh, are just wonderful. So, again, it all comes together, all, all works together for good. I know I threw a lot out there, but I wanted to, to say that, uh, you know, regardless of what's going on in your life and, you know, in the pits of uh, depression, the pits of, you know, making poor decisions based on, you know, selfish desires and uh, self-centeredness, that, uh, you know, God can do amazing, amazing things. And so I'm, I'm blessed and, and so fortunate. Wow, what a powerful story. Thank you, Tom, for um, giving us all the details. Uh, it's great. I love uh, what I see in your story. You led yourself transformed by God. I mean, you asked the difficult questions, and now the life you're living is so much different than what you lived a long time ago. So what are your key learnings? Yeah, I think uh, the key learnings from... From all of that is one really has to have the priorities straight. I mean, it, it's something that I have to spend time on and really write down. You know, what do you want out of your life? What do you want to make happen on all different on all those levels uh, with your relationships, with your family and friends, your social circles, and your spiritual life with uh, with God, with Jesus? What what do you want that to look like as a priority number one? It it has to be right there and, and avoid. <laughs> the pain that uh, that can come on by not listening and, and being being engaged with uh, your faith and family. 
And then, of course, uh, without that, you, your health and wellness is not going to be good. I mean, you have to you get your faith and family in order, and then health and wellness. You have to take care of yourself physically to be able to be good to anybody else, right? With a, with health, you have a, a thousand wishes. Without health, you got just but one, right? So that that is so so very important. And then uh, finally, I I put wealth building as my my third priority. Uh, I'm a businessman, you know. I'm an entrepreneur with a specialization in in real high technology and software, and that's just you know a gift that I uh, that God gave me to to be that. And I think uh, that's a very very big part of uh, giving back, you know, to have resources to be able to be a giver, and you know, that's what money money can do that for you. So. Anyway, that's that's my key learnings. Get your priorities straight. Make sure you know where you're headed as an individual and uh, have faith. Yeah, that's so important. You have to know where you're headed. And we're going to come to the wealth building in a minute. But let's focus on the on the knowing where you're heading for 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 for, the, for right now, because you're a big fan of the future self concept. And by the way, if if you want to learn more about I did a solo episode, so it's kind of show up somewhere <laughs> you can also listen to that but let's talk about this concept for a while because tell us a bit what you think about the concept and why it's such a game changer yeah yeah and i uh, encourage everybody to listen to your uh future self podcast it's outstanding with uh some amazing tips and uh everybody should should tune into that but yeah I, i'm a big fan of the future self i know you're a student of uh, Ben Hardy as well, and there, you know, there's a lot of other resources out there. But you know what? What is uh, the future self? I think Peter Drucker's quote's really, really good. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And that uh, you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to what what we think about is what we are. It's all about our thoughts and uh, where we want to take our lives. So the future self. To me, is you know looking out three years, five years, who is that person? Because if you look back at your life three, five years ago, you are a much different person than you were, uh, than you are today, right? And so I, I think the big key there is to be intentional, as opposed to just letting life's ups and downs uh, dictate where you're going to be. You decide where you're going to be and focus and move forward, and that's where. The whole future self concept comes in, and uh, you know, to me, that's where you know we talk about vision boards and you know, um, you know, goal setting, writing things down, uh, or you're just out there boiling in the ocean of life. You know, the slow boil that Ben Hardy talks about, where if there's no intention, your 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 behavior is going to be unpredictable. You're going to go uh, in directions you may not even recognize you're going until it's too late which is something I've experienced. So the future self is really what uh, drives your behavior. If you have a, a real good concept of where you want to go, that becomes a, the filter, as you said in, in your podcast, that's the filter for your behavior. Would your future self be eating this bag of chips if you're, you're looking to be healthier? Uh, would your future self be you know, watching this particular show or doing this on the internet? These are the kind of things that the future self that Having that uh, defined, uh, I found extremely valuable. And how does this relate to your faith? I mean, you know, um, creating your future and your vis wishes is one thing, but how do you align that with God's will? Well, I think this comes down to uh, you know searching your heart. What what do you what do you feel? Where where is your heart strings tugging you? I mean, everybody you know has different talents. You have ideas, you have dreams that are, are are in your your heart, in your mind. Where are these coming from? You know, and and to really do a do a deep dive on that and discern what is God trying to tell you, right? And spend spend time working through that and put it down on paper and pray about it. And then again it comes down to faith. You know, what is faith? You know, I think uh, Hebrews eleven one is my favorite uh my favorite verse where faith is the confidence that what we hope for, what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance of things that we cannot see. So this is what, uh, what I believe. You know, if, if you're going after your future self and you're putting it all down on paper and you're, you're having God be your partner, 
in designing that and then put, put your faith to work, all things come together for good again. And do you think this concept is why you are so successful? Is this the, what changed the game? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Where, you know, I, I think uh, there, there's all, all different verses in the Bible talk about this. You know, you, you know when you, we look at uh, Matthew 7, 7, where, you know, ask and shall be given, seeking you shall find, knock and shall be opened to you. These are all indications that, hey, you know, it's up to us to define where we're going and what we want. And Jesus says it over and over that, uh, you know, so your faith be it unto you. I mean, th these are facts of the Bible. They're promises on the Bible. And that's where, uh, you know, the future self concept and the biblical interpretation, I think, mesh very well. And uh, it's a concept that we should be embracing as a, as a Christian. So speaking of success, um, well, I know in the Christian community, sometimes it's somewhat controversial. Some people say we should be successful. Others say we shouldn't be successful. <laughs> so let's talk about your wealth building, because I think that's a great topic, because um, I want just to hear your thoughts on why do you want to build wealth and why actually this is part of your success story. Yeah, I think, you know, once you get past faith and family, health and wellness, uh, wealth building becomes a critical area and everybody's given their gifts. You know, we've got some missionaries out there that make no money at all, but they're, they're out harvesting souls. You know, I mean, it's a different game. It was so, uh, I'm speaking from my own, my own experience, but I'd also say that when you look at, uh, you know, what are people afraid of in their life? You know, number one fear is probably, you know, death. And, uh, You know, then we could say public speaking or doing a podcast. But, uh, you know, right up there at the top is financial security. You know, where what's going to happen when I retire? I don't have enough money. Or, you know, th these things that are, are, are worries. And Jesus always, you know, in many, many places say, hey, worry, how much worry, how many hours of your life are you going to add by worrying about it? But the facts are, you know, th this is something that, that that's very clear that are concerned Folks, you know how, how much money they have. Uh, so wealth building becomes a an area that you, you have to take care of your family. You have to take care of yourself, your family, and you know beyond that, we have an obligation to to tithe and to 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 give to others. So that's where uh, you know to me it becomes a priority. And you know in my case, I want to be able to to have enough resources to be able to offer and those resources to the right charities, the right groups that are doing things in, in uh, the world that need to be done, like our friend Eric in, in Cambodia there. I mean, these are, are critical, critical uh, areas that and they, they need resources. And so that's where I believe uh, that's a very important uh, to make happen. And, you know, I'd also say that it's, uh, it's biblical when you look at what uh, the parable of the talents, you know, where you look at what Jesus is talking about there, gave five, uh, you know, in that parable, the, the owner, the landowner, the, the main man there is given five talents to one and two to another, one to, to the third person. And you remember the story, one guy, he doubled it. And uh, the master said, hey, well done. Second guy doubled it, well done. Third guy had his talent and he buried it in the sand. That was not cool. I mean, he, he was chastised, thrown out, gnashing of teeth, you know. So we all have these, all have these talents that we need to be investing in and growing. And in some cases, that means growing wealth. You know, in other cases, with the missionary, it means growing his ministry. But, you know, I think it depends on the person and what's, what's in their heart and what they have to make happen. So I would remind uh, everyone when, when we're sitting back in our rocking chair, you know, And we're looking back, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. And uh, I don't want to be feeling like I, I, I'm leaving gas in the tank, you know. So let's get out there, build as much as we can and, and offer uh, those resources to help. So that's how, I, uh, that's how I see it. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I love that you are, you are thinking beyond yourself and beyond your success and you want to um, build God's kingdom. You want to leave a legacy. So for those 
um, that are tuning in that want to build wealth for those kingdom minded people who who listen to 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 my episodes can you make this a bit um, very practical how do you start building wealth and what is the best strategy to do that well i think uh, building wealth is uh, all about spending less than you earn right and uh, you know and saving and investing and there's all kinds of resources available for that uh, where you should be saving you know 20% of your your income if you you know and and uh, looking at ways to to grow that at a very minimum right but uh, beyond that in in you know the, to the next level as an entrepreneur where you you're looking to add value and create new products new services new uh, ways to uh, help people you know that's where uh, you know I spend my time in that area and um, there's all kinds of ways to uh, to drive value that, that can create wealth uh, and there's all kinds of ways to screw it up which I've done many many times so you know it's it's a matter of experience it's a matter of what you know you've been called to do and what you enjoy but at the end of the day yeah it's a uh, it's spending less than you make and uh, investing it in in uh, ways that are going to get you a, a return just like uh, the tale of the talents right yeah that's wonderful that's great thank you for for explaining that and how does this make you feel actually that you're able to be generous you're able to give you're able to to support ministries you mentioned the work for instance of our friend eric in cambodia and phnom penh like how does this make you feel oh uh i think wonderful right i mean to be a part of a Something like uh, what what uh, Eric you know run, he runs an orphanage or and uh, you know a school there in Cambodia for you know kids that could be exploited if his service hope for silent voices didn't exist. I mean so that's amazing you know to just even be a, a a small part of that is so exciting and you know that's what what drives me to to keep going and and to to get these businesses that I've got really cranking and um, be able to uh, to do more of that, uh, to help more people. And, you know, I think that's what what I'm called to do. And, you know, we, we've we just been very fortunate uh, where we're at, and, and we've got a lot of great things going that, that should, should make that happen. So it's wonderful. Yeah, so what's next then? You, you said there is more to come. Is, is that another IPO, another company, or what are your dreams? Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, I, I've got, a, uh, you know, some great businesses right now. We've got amazing clients um, in our backup. You know, it's a software business. I've got a couple of different uh, businesses happening that, you know, they could explode. And, uh, you know, I, I put it all in the hands of the Lord and say, hey, look, your will be done and let's go for it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're pushing hard. I've got some amazing people on the team. But, again, it's the, yeah, I can just feel the end on my shoulder, you know, this is not, you know, I'm not that smart a guy. And to have uh, these wonderful people around me is uh, just a privilege. And we've got some a great, great markets. We've got some great solutions, you know, sky's the limit. So it's a matter of just making sure we're, we're setting our goals and, and keeping on track on the business, business side. Uh, and I'm very confident in that. And then, you know, but it, it all comes down to, to the other pieces, you know, that if you don't have your foundation right, your family and your your faith, everything's come crashing down. And that that happened to me. I know what that's like. And it's a very, very ugly place. You know, faith and family, absolutely critical. And then your health, you have to be in good shape. Make sure you're you're taking care of yourself physically and mentally and spiritually so that you have the wealth building as the top. You know, you, you have the capability and the resources to be able to, to throw yourself into that knowing that everything else is under control. So that's the plan. Wonderful, wonderful. As we're wrapping up, Tom, can you give us one last piece of advice? How can we live our best life? I really love, you know, I read the Bible all the time, but I also love uh, James Allen, As a Man Thinketh. He's got this beautiful poem at the, the very first page. Mind is the master power that molds and makes, and man is mind, and evermore he takes. The tool of thought, shaping what he will, a thousand joys, a thousand ills. He thinks in secret, and it comes to pass. Environment is but his looking glass. I love that poem. 
especially that last line. He thinks in secret, and it comes to pass. Environment is but his looking glass. It just goes back to what, what Jesus is talking about. To your faith, be, uh, be it unto you. You know, what do you believe you can make happen? We can make so much happen with uh, what's inside us. And you know, we just have to look, look within. And I would say, for those folks that are saying, oh, you know, how do I start this? How do I do this? I don't get it. It's a simple question that uh, Dan Sullivan, another one of our, our mentors, came up with that I think everybody could ask themselves and then get a cup of coffee and a pen and take your time to answer it. And the question is, if we were meeting here three years from today and you were looking back over those three years, what has to have happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel happy with your progress? Now, if you answer that question comprehensively and honestly, you're going to be looking at your future self. And once you can see your future self, what you want, that becomes a filter for all your behavior moving forward. And the job is to accelerate that future self and bring it closer, faster. You know, that's what's so exciting. That's what's so exciting. And think big. Think really big. You know, that's the only way to, to jump out of the what they call linear thinking. We got to think much bigger, 10 times bigger than where we're at today. And, uh, you know, that's what, uh, you know, the latest book from, from Ben Hardy talks about, and I agree with that 100%. Think big, and let's go. And then, uh, you know, just what we talked about, uh, faith is a confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us the assurance of things we cannot see. Yeah, that's what a great way to end our conversation. Think big, think big, guys, and go back and, and, and ask this important question what progress do you need to make in the next three years to feel happy about it take your time after this interview ask this important question i love asking this question to some of my clients <laughs> or even in sales interviews sometimes sales conversations i love that um thank you so much tom for being on today um thank you for your insights and um where can people find you uh you can find me on linkedin uh, LinkedIn, I think, slash Tom Fedro, or just look up my name. Not too many of those out there. And then uh, www.tomfedro.com is my website. Reach out anyway, and you, know, you can always reach me on my uh, my email at tfedro, T-F-E-D-R-O, at cox.net, C-O-X.net. Happy to chat with anybody. That's great. And I'm going to leave all the links in the show notes below. i also going to put your book by the way, Tom, he wrote an excellent right. book. It's called Next Level Selling. I love this book. I got that. Yes, right there. Um, buy this book. It's a de definite guide to closing high dollar deals. So get that book. So yeah, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you once again, Tom. It was great to have you on the show today. Hey, my pleasure, David. Thank you so much. And congratulations on what you're doing with this podcast. I, I love it. And you're, you're reaching a lot of folks. Keep it up.